Terry Schneider is a trailblazer, literally and figuratively. In fact, her compact, powerful figure has blazed trails in multiple sports in some 80 countries, through jungles, deserts, over mountains, through mud, and temperatures low and high. Why? In the 30 years I've been aware of her, Terry has adapted from a marathon runner and triathlete to ultra competitor, instructor, photographer, author, and consultant. You know, I've been a competitor since day one. You know, if you ask my mother, I dropped out of the womb and just sort of took. And that, that's something that's innate. It's, and it's not so much about um, winning. It's more about being the best for myself. And I think that's been a part of my life forever. As far as when sport really has became integrated professionally, personally, and my whole world kind of became about that, it was when I quit my job. So I've been self-employed for since about 25 years. That's Terry in 2000 in Borneo, competing in the Eco Challenge Adventure Race. Creator Mark Burnett went on to develop the Survivors TV series. The Eco Challenge project is what really took you to another level, Terry, a bit of a celebrity status because of the television nature of it. How did that all happen? As a triathlete, I did pretty well, and I'm, I'm definitely driven by passions. So I was intensely passionate about tri triathlon. I devoted my life to doing as well as I could in the sport and trying to wrap that into a job. In 1995, the first Eco Challenge happened. Mark Burnett developed the first Eco Challenge. The first one was in Utah. It looked intriguing. It was something different. I had to learn a lot of new sports in order to do this event. Uh, I like to up the ante. I like to continue to challenge myself and try new things. And I had this fire in my belly to try this event. So we did the first Eco, Eco Challenge in 1995 and I fell in love with the sport. Memories of Borneo. Yeah. Like you're hanging, you're, you're, what are we gonna see perhaps? Like you're gonna be uh, pulling poison darts out of your arm or <laughs> hanging over a waterfall. Or... Borneo is a formidable environment. It's like a petri dish of disease and parasites for the human body. And yet there's a madness to being in the jungle, an intense madness that's incredibly intriguing. Being in the jungle at night was a surreal experience. The sounds, you, could, you can't see your hand in front of your face unless you turn on your headlamp. It was a intensely humid environment. Terry has evolved over the last 30 years. She now brings the same passion as a competitor to teaching local athletes how to push their envelope while she prepares for her next chapter. I coach quite a few endurance athletes, triathletes, runners, ultra runners, adventure racers. And one of the, th one of the ways that I view myself in that process is a facilitator. A friend, of, a friend of mine would call me the instigator, actually, <laughs> because I like to plant the seeds of like, you know, I think, have you ever thought about running a marathon? Have you ever thought about doing your first Ironman? Um, I don't think of, I don't think of humans in terms of having limitations. I don't think of, of sport as a way to draw a line anywhere, personally or with people that I coach. So I don't think in terms of, can I do something it's more about how can I make something happen. And I, I take that process into my coaching as well. So it's not so much about can this person run a marathon, it's about how are we going to get them from here to the starting line of the event in a safe and effective manner. Locals got to see Terry's postcards from the edge, images gathered during her travels at the annual Open Studios Artist Tour. Moments captured when Terry finishes the race, and takes in the breathtaking scenery surrounding the course. So Terry, you have quite a resume and you have quite uh, a history of all these events. So what's next? I understand Bhutan is on the horizon. How did that hatch and what are you gonna do with it? Yeah, this, this started with trying to create Expedition Bhutan, which turned out to be a four-person expedition crossing the country of Bhutan trekking and mountain biking. We ended up doing a documentary film of our journey. Before the 11 month, the, the planning was 11 months long. Before we even dropped into the country for the first time for the expedition, I knew that I had found a very special and unique place, that I had really fallen in love with a country 
I went there and it, it did in fact happen. I fell in love with Bhutan. The people, the culture, the geography is stunning, but they embody a unique way of being amongst themselves as humans. They still have the same problems that every other country does as human beings. You know, all the same dilemmas and negotiations that we struggle with. But they seem to have a way of living together as people that is cohesive and um, supportive, uniform. This, this, is an in, this is an intriguing place. Terry, what is it about Santa Cruz? It's your home, you've traveled all over the world and you always come back. What is it about Santa Cruz that makes all this work for you? I think what Santa Cruz represents to me is an opportunity to have the lifestyle that's the most important to me. So I like to be outside, I like the ocean, I want mountains, I want to be in the woods. Within a matter of minutes, I want those things at my fingertips. Santa Cruz has this sort of you know, intellectual grunge thing going on and, you know, kind of everything in between. And I, I'm attracted to that. I like uh, to live in a place that allows you to be who you are, to express your passions in whatever way you wish. And this community definitely does that. There's an intelligence to it and there's a laid backness to it all wrapped into one. And that, that's, I think, quite lovely. You know, I'm a, I'm a person that's driven by passions and my passions are very uh, consistent and yet they're dynamic at the same time, which means that I will, as long as my body allows, I'll continue to be a physical person. As long as my mind is intact, I'll continue to be a very intellectual person. But how that actually looks, I really can't tell you. I'm not someone who says, oh, 20 years down the road, this is where I wanna be. That seems odd to me. Each year I'll create a new target and I'll throw it out there. Maybe in a couple years I'll put a target out there. But for the most part, I listen to my, my gut and I go with what, what fire in my belly is really calling to me. And that's the one that I'm gonna go after because I know that if I do that, if I go after the fire in my belly that's really speaking the loudest, it's gonna be an epic experience, definitely.